Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today we are starting the long awaited Lucinda Berry vlog and the first book that I started already, I'm already 10% in, is The Best of Friends by Lucinda Berry. It is about these three moms who have always been really close friends since high school. They grow up, they're like mom friends, their kids are friends, and then the three of their kids get into a horrible tragic accident and one of them comes out fine one of them is severely damaged and has to stay in the hospital and the other one passes away and now there's going to be an ensuing investigation we're trying to figure out what happens there's a lot of domestic drama this is just feeling like the domestic thriller that i needed and can i just say right off the bat i am so so impressed with the mental health rep. I am so excited to just like dive right in. I'm sorry, like there was no intro or anything to this video because like I really love this book. And you know, when you get that feeling when you start a book that like, mm, this is gonna be a good one. I definitely have that with the best of friends so far, even though I'm very, very short into the book. But right now I'm about to go head down and get dinner with Cameron. And then we're gonna like take a little walk. And after that, I'll probably read some more. So I'll be back with an update as soon as I have one. I'm super excited to get more into The Best of Friends. Hello vlog, it's me. It is the next morning and I'm actually about to go leave, which is why I'm dress like this i'm about to be a little like outdoor girl and go to my equine therapy little workshop my supervisor actually runs equine therapy because she has a horse so i'm going to observe her and kind of learn a little bit of how to do it just see how it works um she works with trauma with her clients and her horse. So obviously I do trauma work in my practice. So I'm super excited to go out there and observe, but it is so far away from my house and I have to be there so early. So it is like super, super early in the morning right now, but at least on that long drive, I can be listening to the audiobook for the best of friends which i am really enjoying as you saw last night i was getting the puzzles out and that's how you know that i'm enjoying an audiobook <laughs> is if i want excuses to read it and obviously i'm getting out a puzzle so what else you do while you're doing a puzzle listen to an audiobook and i actually got i think i'm like at 55 percent so I got a good chunk into the book last night, like over the halfway point. I am loving it. This is just the type of domestic thriller that I like, where we have multiple perspectives. It never gets boring. There's so much drama. Like everybody has their own drama that they're dealing with and people are hiding secrets from each other. And at this point, at the halfway point, like some of the secrets are being revealed, but we don't know exactly like why they're relevant to the case of like these boys and the tragedy that took place. I also just really like the emotional awareness with which this book is written. I feel like it's really easy for the characters in a domestic thriller to just feel one note. And I feel like with like Megan Miranda, Sherry Lapina, I'm just thinking of like the common domestic thriller authors that I read from. A lot of the times with them, their characters react to things in a way that's just like basic, I guess is the only way I would know how to describe it. Like it makes sense, but it's not like a strong reaction. Hello Boba, how are you? She like really wants to go on a walk and she's very confused why I'm up so early. So she's gonna sit with me for a little bit. I feel like the reactions from a lot of domestic thriller characters are just like not fully fleshed out. You know, it can feel a little one note or even like non-reactive, like something shocking will happen to a character and it is shocking for the reader, but the shock is not necessarily like 
put on the page for the characters as well. What are you looking? However, something I've noticed about Lucinda Berry's writing is that she really fleshes out the emotional responses of every single character. They feel like very real, genuine reactions. They track with just like what I know about emotional awareness, emotional regulation, shame and the shame cycle, defense mechanisms, like all of it just feels like someone who understands emotions very, very well, has written it. And while there are some mental health things talked about in the book, I don't think it's bad at all. Like usually I would say any mental health issue discussed within the context of a thriller, I'm not gonna like because we just shouldn't be scared of mental health. And I feel like thrillers are like, oh, this shocking, salacious, dramatic situation. And even if it's good, accurate mental health rap, I don't know if that's the best place for mental health rap, um, but I'm not having a problem with it in this book. And I just complained about the selective mutism rep in Credence by Penelope Douglas, which was absolutely abhorrent. And there's actually a case of selective mutism talked about in The Best of Friends that I feel like is super, super accurate. It is great. It is explained kind of how it developed for the character and how it's affecting him and the people around him. And it feels just very, very accurate uh, for somebody, especially a child that has gone through trauma. So I really, really, really love this book so far. There's nothing else really for me to say other than it's great. And I can't wait to listen to more on my drive. Hello guys. Okay, hello guys. So I'm back from the equine therapy groups and it was so fun, but I am so tired. <laughs> it's just like, such a long day standing in the sun and like attending to other people's systems and then I had the long drive home so I'm like so tired and it's only 150 so I need to like wake myself up and take advantage of the rest of this day that I have but good news is on the drive I did make it to the 85% mark of the best of friends and everything's going crazy okay things are happening all the things that were like burgeoning are finally like coming to fruition kind of thing which is my favorite part in a thriller when i get to start like putting all the pieces together uh, but i still don't know like what exactly happened i have a couple of theories of like what happened with this incident with the boys um i did have to suspend my disbelief for one part of the book but i don't know it was like a medical thing and it just seemed like a medical miracle and i was like mm, i didn't really think that would happen but whatever so that was the one part that i was like kind of taken out of the story a little bit but everything else i've really enjoyed so i'm going to try to finish this book up maybe do a little bit more of my puzzle and i will come back to you with a final review okay vlog i am done with the best of friends and i'm gonna give it four stars i really really enjoyed it when the big reveal happened i kind of expected a little bit more of a shock i feel like it was something that was being alluded to throughout the book so it wasn't necessarily like a shocking twist kind of thriller but it was more of a domestic mystery and it definitely kept me intrigued the whole time so no complaints there i was just kind of expecting more of a shock and i didn't get it however there was kind of like a last chapter twist that i was not expecting i actually completely forgot about that part of the plot and then it came in at the very end to be a, like a little bit of a twist so it wasn't like super twisty and turny but it did have that final punch at the end that i really enjoyed and overall i really enjoyed this book i thought it was a great domestic thriller if you like those you will definitely like this and it also had really wonderful mental health representation i loved the way that the emotions of the characters were really fleshed out and described like somebody who knows how to describe really complex emotions, which is just speaks to Lucinda Berry's profession. Like you can just tell that she has some kind of psychology background by 
reading her books and this is only my first foray into her novels so I'm already really really enjoying her. Next up I'm going to pick up The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. I believe this is like a creepy kid kind of thriller. People have said it reminds them of The Push and Baby Teeth so I'm expecting to really like this one and if you're a patron you have already seen all of this footage. Y'all this is just a moment for me to plug my Patreon and tell you guys all my Patreon people have already seen the footage that you're about to see because I read The Perfect Child with my book club on Patreon in the month of April. So that was super, super fun. And I'm absolutely loving talking to everybody in the Discord and we all chose it together. Obviously everybody voted on it. So obviously I'm still going to put the vlog footage in of me reading the book and giving a review but all my patrons saw it first and we get to read it together and do a live show and we've been doing reading sprints and yeah it's really fun so you should probably go join if you want to have a good little fun time with us because honestly i i knew it was going to be like fun having a patreon but it has so exceeded my expectations i think it's just like the people that are joining are like my people you know my actual friends on the platform that i would like kiki with in real life so we're having a lot of fun over there but yeah other than that just wanted to let you know i am starting the perfect child hey vlog sorry for the ac it's literally so hot guess who won one point I literally won he was trying hard too he was literally trying his best he, he said he was trying to bury me I won I can't believe it I've never won anything against this man I'm so happy he owes me a blizzard now <laughs> he's crushed just kidding the loser got me sonic instead <laughs> Hello vlog, yes, I am in the knockoff silky dress because we're about to go to a little influencer thing to take pictures. But before we go, I did want to update you that last night and this morning, I got about 20% into The Perfect Child and I'm really liking it. I can see the comparisons to The Push a little bit because our main character does struggle with infertility. Just keep that in mind. If you struggle with infertility, that might be triggering for you. But we haven't seen any like evil child antics yet. Basically what's happening is this doctor and this nurse who are married, they have a child abuse case come into their hospital. They're dealing with infertility. They're like starting to get close to this kid. And it's obviously implied that they're gonna try to adopt her and take her out of this horrible situation that she's in, which sounds great in theory, but apparently just because of the description of the book, uh, I think the child is gonna be like wacko and uh, psycho and not a great addition to their family. So we haven't seen any of that so far. It's just been like, you know, how a traumatized child would act kind of. Like there are some things that I'm like, mm, okay, a traumatized kid would not just like sit there and blink at you. And then when they get to know you, like cuddle up to you, like, no, a traumatized child is going to be wincing and flinching and trying to defend themselves and running away from people. Um, because all they know about adults is that they treat them badly. So I feel like those are supposed to be the signs that we're picking up on that something is not quite right with this girl. Um, and hopefully we will get to the actual like thrillerness of it soon where this girl freaks out and tries to kill people around her or something i don't know people have said this book is like really really dark i'm not seeing that so far but again i'm only 20 percent in i was just expecting it to be a little bit faster paced at this point i don't know it might get better as i keep reading i don't know i don't want to judge it too quickly but maybe my expectations were too high it's not as like crazy and dark and fast paced as everyone was saying. Those are my initial thoughts. Again, only 20% in. Take it with a grain of salt. 
all right we're gonna go take some pictures and i will update you whenever i read a little bit more probably at the 50 percent mark good morning guys this is the state of my puzzle that i got to last night i'm literally so proud of myself i got so much done i'm literally almost done i think i can complete it today um but I don't have a book update for you actually, um, because when I was making all this wonderful progress, I was actually watching The Ultimatum. <laughs> Me and Cameron got like sucked in. And I don't know if I've talked about this before. I don't think I've talked about this on the internet before, but me and Cameron were almost on that show. A casting person from Netflix uh, scouted me and reached out to me and really wanted me on that show because it filmed in Austin. And we went through the whole like audition interview process and they were like, it's a done deal. Like we think you're perfect for the show. And then they met Cameron <laughs> and they were like, um, yeah, no, your man is way too committed to you. Like, I don't think <laughs> that would work. So yeah, we were watching that last night and it's so funny to watch something that you were almost on, like that you almost experienced. Mm-mm. Thank God we weren't on there. We literally dodged so many bullets. Like, first of all, I would not want to live with any of those men. Like, I couldn't even imagine, like, living with my best friend. And I I love her, but, like, no. Mm -mm. I'm not built to live with people, you know what I mean? Except for Cameron. So, like, living with a random man, kill me, shoot me dead. Mm -mm. That would not happen. I would have cried every day. So, yeah, that's why I didn't read any of The Perfect Child. Because I was just like, ah! Like, we we're watching the show, having a conniption fit about, like, that could have been us. Um, and thank God it wasn't. Um, but, yeah, I have to do some things this morning. And then, hopefully, when I'm done, I will have some time before sprints to finish the puzzle. I have Patreon sprints at three, and I'm so excited. The first ones went so well. I had so much fun. We had, like, a good little group of, like, six to nine people the whole time and it was great so i'm super excited to do some more um but yeah i gotta go do some work things and then hopefully complete my puzzle and read a little bit more before sprints it's such a dreary day it's like the perfect day to listen to an audiobook and do a puzzle mm. living 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 so living if you will I look kind of a mess, <laughs> but I do have an update for you. The puzzle has been completed. Lunch has been eaten. You can probably hear the dogs snuffling around trying to eat the crumbs off the floor because as I was chopping my baguette for my bruschetta, <laughs> I don't know what happened. It literally flew out of my hand. And so it was a free for all for baguette crumbs. Um, so Boba and Mochi are very happy right now. I am at the halfway point of The Perfect Child and oh, can I just say that I knew it? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew it. Okay, I didn't know it. This was not something that I predicted, but I really hoped that what happened when she went to her doctor was gonna happen. It happened, it happened. Oh my god. I just knew. I just knew because of the comparisons to other books that that might happen. Ah! I am so scared to see what's gonna happen with this little devil child. Okay, and what I was expecting when people were talking about this book was like a literal possessed like demon child. I like that Lucinda Berry didn't do that. I like that she made it like a realistic scenario. Like this really difficult child with these complex psychological issues could exist and probably does exist out there somewhere in the world. Um, and the mental health rep is fabulous. I mean, just amazing. Every time there's a scene in a therapy session, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Like this is exactly what would be happening in real life. And I love it, like it is going so well. And I feel like the tension is building at this point. I feel like something is gonna come to a head, right? Something has to happen. So now I'm just waiting for it. I'm just waiting patiently 
for the big thing to happen. Um, but can I just say that I hate the dad, which is what's new? I mean, we hate all male characters in thrillers. I don't think there's ever been a male character in a thriller that I've enjoyed following, <laughs> but the perspective from the dad's point of view, like those chapters, I really just cannot deal with him. I'm rolling my eyes the whole time. I hate him. He is literally a doctor. And this is why I hate, as a mental health professional, this is why I hate dealing with medical professionals because they always just think they know what they're doing and they don't listen to the mental health people. It's like, bro, you probably took a two week psychiatric course and now you think, you know, mm -mm. listen to the god dang therapist. I promise you she knows what she's talking about. <sighs> the dad, he's making me so mad. He's like doubting everything. He doesn't see. He's so stupid. He's like the dad from the push. So stupid. And I don't know if this is something Lucinda Berry did on purpose to like align you with the main female character and like help you empathize with her, but intentional or not, I hate the man. <laughs> so that is my update. I look so rough. I am probably going to go shower before sprints so I can like feel nice and refreshed um, and cuddle up and do some reading sprints. So excited, see you there if you're a patron. If you're not, what are you doing? Trying to go live with my patron. So excited. Oh my God. Oh my God. Chilling. Okay, mm -mm. because I'm 70% through and I hate the dad so much, I want him dead. Having such a good time. Okay, our sprint is over, gotta go, bye. So I am still sprinting and having a great time, but I did just wanna jump up on the vlog and tell y'all about the perfect child because I am so sucked in. This book has gotten to the level of darkness that I was expecting. It's gotten to the level of fast pacedness that I was expecting. And now it's giving me that five star feeling because, oh my God, it's gotten so intense. It's going to a place that I did not think it was gonna go. It is definitely not at the domestic thriller level anymore. It is so much deeper. I am obsessed with it. I am absolutely loving it. I don't wanna stop reading and I'm talking about it with everybody on the sprints and it is so fun. But obviously I wanted to give an update for everyone who's not on the sprints. So I was so mad at the dad and now I'm thinking like, oh, well maybe other people have a fault in it and maybe it's also this. And it's like, I'm going back and like questioning my theories and I love when a thriller makes me do that. I love when it's not just like, oh, I have this theory and you're not gonna disprove it. Like I have no confidence in my theories at this point. I keep going back and forth like, is this kid really like this or is the mother crazy or is it the dad manipulating the situation or does the social worker have something to do with it? Like, there are just so many questions in my brain and it is so good. It is so good. I literally cannot wait to finish this. I'm at the 87% mark, so I'm almost done. I can't wait to give y'all a good review. Hopefully it is a good review. Hopefully nothing whack happens at the end. We'll see. Y'all, I finished The Perfect Child. I'm giving it five stars. Exactly what I wanted to happen at the end happened. We have justice. I feel like everything, you know, Things were wrecked, okay? Things did not go the way that you want them to go. Obviously, it's a thriller. But for a thriller, this was the best ending that I could hope for. Also, there were like two back-to-back -back twists at the end that got my goat, okay? It really got me, and I loved it so much. So I'm gonna give it five stars. It was so good. A lot of people in the Discord are saying that they didn't like the end. The ending was the clincher for me. The absolute clincher. It's why I give it five stars. Y'all know what I like in a thriller is it's not just going to shock you and throw you around with all these twists. It's got to have something to say to make my time worthwhile. And the perfect child definitely had something to say. I usually do not like mental health rep in a thriller, whether it is good or not. I did enjoy it in this book. 
It felt very aware and it felt like it contributed to the commentary in the book that sometimes the mental health care system in our society, in our country, in America specifically, fails us and horrifying things happen. And I loved that commentary. Obviously that's something that's very, very close to my heart. And I thought the twists were done so effectively. It was so fast paced at the end. It got to a level that was so dark. I thought this little girl hit her level and then she just kept ratcheting up and up and up and up. I could not believe what I was reading. It was so good. I loved it, five stars. And the next book that I'm gonna read for this vlog um, was suggested in the chat of my sprints and that was When She Returned by Lucinda Berry, obviously. And it is about a cult. A woman was kidnapped 11 years ago um, by a cult and now she's back to her family and she's about to turn their worlds upside down. I'm so excited to start it. Cameron's about to get home in literally two minutes, so I gotta start dinner, but I am so excited to start this next book knowing that Lucinda Berry could be a new favorite for me. Okay, that's Cameron, gotta go by. Y'all, I was about to make dinner, but when Cameron came home, he told me I got a package. I thought it was the books that I ordered from Pango Books, but it was not. It was two surprises in the mail from Emily Myers. Emily A. Myers, thank you so much for sending me your books. Her debut dark romance, it sounds like a very thrilling romance story, is The Truth About Unspeakable Things. And then I think this is the follow-up, Bound by the Unspeakable. <sighs> Definitely will be reading these. Thank you so much for sending them my way. Y'all know I've been super into dark romance lately, so super excited to get to those. And I like never get books sent to me by like authors or publishers, so that's like so exciting. Thank you, Queen. So you're telling me I just slaved over a stove and made you a delicious, nutritious, healthy, wonderful dinner and you want to have dinner too? Dinner part two. Dinner the sequel. Where are we finna go then? The greatest fast food establishment ever created. Which is? Whataburger. <sighs> In and out can lick my balls. If y'all see me out here looking like a whale, no, it's his fault. It's his fault. It's all his fault. <laughs> Your little smug smile. <laughs> We're here. This is my temple. Hello, vlog. Good morning. It is the next day. I have you in a weird location because my table is occupied with my other puzzle. I started last night while I was listening to When She Returned. And oh my God, this book is so good. I'm already 40% of the way through because I could not stop listening to this book. It is so crazy to just see like all these people like separately moved on with their lives. You know what I mean? Like. The man who his wife went missing, he's married. Again, like he moved on, he has this other wife. And his daughter that he has with the woman who was missing doesn't remember her mom at all. And then obviously the new wife is there with her kids. And then the woman who was missing is coming back, has a baby. It is just drama central basically. And there's so much going on with this cult. Like it is so scary to see how like a very normal, driven, intelligent woman who you would never think would be sucked in by a cult. It's just chilling to see like how they get into her mind and how she is brainwashed and converted into this cult without even knowing it. It's not even like she was like unsuspecting. Like she was, when she went missing and like got sucked into the cult, 
She was an investigative journalist trying to expose the cult's activities. It's not like she didn't know to guard against this. She was a very intelligent woman who went in there to expose these people and she got sucked in. Like watching that whole process is so scary because we get chapters, like every other chapter is like Kate, the woman who went missing then back then when she was getting sucked into the cult and going missing. And then we switch back and forth between those chapters and chapters from Abby, the daughter, and Meredith, the um, new wife of this guy whose wife I'm missing. And their chapters are in present day as they like try to figure out what's going on with Kate, what happened to her, and try to get her to, you know, overcome the trauma of what she's been going through and like, come out of her shell and like tell them what's happening because she's just shell shocked at this point. She hasn't been in society. She's been trapped in this cult for years. This book has me in a chokehold. <laughs> I need to know what's happening next. Um, and luckily I have to clean my house this morning. All my sessions today are like afternoon sessions. They don't start until three. Um, and then I have them back to back to back. But you know what? I, that means I have the whole morning to clean my house and listen to this audio book. And I'm so excited to know what's happening. I just need to know. I just need to know. The house is clean. The laundry is going. The neighbor next door is drilling and banging. Who knows <laughs> what all of that is but I am 70% of the way through when she returned and I'm still really liking it. We keep learning like little bits about how the cult experience evolved for Kate over the years and how she finally escaped. Obviously we are building up to that and oh, and oh my gosh, it is so interesting. If you are looking for a culty thriller, I think you're really gonna like this. The only thing that's annoying to me is Meredith's character, the stepmom, like the new wife. Mm, I hate her. <laughs> I hate her. She's like, I'm getting pushed out of the family. Like, girl, yeah. Mm, yeah, you don't belong here anymore. Kate's back. At least that's my opinion. Like, that's how I feel about it. So every time she's like on her sad shit, I'm like, this girl is literally in a cult. You cannot be sad. Give her her husband back. Reparations, girl. Mm -hmm. She is owed her husband back and you can move on with your life. Goodbye. And it doesn't help that the lady narrating her chapters, her voice is so grating. I literally hate that woman's voice. She just sounds like a bitch I hate. That's the only way I can describe it. <laughs> so I'm really annoyed about her character, which I'm sure is probably intentional. The rest of it I'm enjoying. I will come back to you with a final review at some point today. Hello vlog. Nice to see ya. I am so disappointed right now. I listened to the last bit of when she returned as I was getting ready to do my sessions tonight. I finished the book and I have to give it two stars. <laughs> I'm so disappointed because I was really liking the first, honestly, like 80% of the book. I don't know what it was. It was just like, why would you have it end that way? The ending was not good. I don't know. Like, I feel like the end was building up to something and the twist that ended up happening just did not sit right with me. Uh. No, I did not like the twist at all. I don't think it needed to be this like big shocking twist ending. Maybe it was because I was liking it more as just like a domestic kind of family drama, but I did not like the way that it tried to pop off and be like super, super twisty. I loved that at the end of The Perfect Child, but for some reason, I just don't think this was the book to do that. And I ended up not, liking it at all at the end it's just like the ending felt so hopeless and like horrible because of the twist and it just left me with such a bad taste in my mouth and we didn't even get an epilogue we got nothing it just like cut off after that bad hopeless twist 
it was so abrupt and so just like sad and it kind of ruined my perception of the whole book and obviously i'm not going to give away what the twist was but like once you see things that way with the truth which is the twist that we got that like clarifies everything and you look back at the rest of the book that you'd already read it's like well now i see that in a completely different way oh it's just so upsetting like i did not think that choice was a good choice for the ending so i gave it two stars Sad. This is the first Lucinda to Berry book that I haven't absolutely loved so far though, so it's okay. After my session today, I think I'm going to pick up my last book for this vlog, which is going to be Saving Noah, obviously, also by Lucinda Berry. And people say that this has a lot of like moral dilemma type of stuff in it. And I love, love, love thrillers like that that have like moral dilemma type of things. Uh, I think this follows a mom and her son. Uh, I think the son's a little bit older, like a teenager. And he does something that is inexcusable. But apparently from the other reviews that I've heard, you find yourself like being aligned with Noah, the kid who fucked up and like did something horrible. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. People say that this book like makes them think things that they never thought that they would think. Did that sentence make sense? I don't know, but I'm excited to get into it and hopefully I will like it better than when she returns so we can end the vlog on a good note. But I have to go into sessions, so I will see you later. vlog it is much later and i've made a good amount of progress on my puzzle <laughs> while listening to the saving noah audiobook i'm actually over halfway done now it's literally so short it is like a six hour audiobook it is such a short book if you want like a fast-paced thriller to just like bang out this would be a good one. And basically what's going on is this family's teenage son is a sex offender. He's fully confessed, like owned up to everything, um, pled guilty, and he's about to get out of juvie. Or he is getting out of juvie right now. And the book is kind of about his transition back into normal life. And it really is amazing how once you have perspective on the situation you do start to empathize with a child molester <laughs> it's very interesting but it's also something that's not new to me like I don't feel like this is very like shocking and groundbreaking because I obviously have my master's in counseling I got my degree in psychology I've done a lot of projects about paraphilias especially pedophilic disorder I actually did my final presentation for one of my classes on pedophilic disorder and how it really is an illness and some people obviously act out and should be put away when they have when they commit crimes you know even if they have the disorder but some people have the disorder and can learn to live with it so it is kind of touching on that issue and I love the way that it is written about again Lucinda Berry just has um a really great way of writing about mental health i've always thought it would be really interesting to see what the general public and not just like you know psychology students <laughs> think about a neutral case of pedophilic disorder and that is pretty much what this book is about uh, i'm really enjoying it it is super interesting just to like see all the perspectives involved especially an offender's mother Hello guys, good morning. I actually ended up finishing <laughs> Saving Noah last night. Cannot believe I finished two books yesterday. I feel like Lucinda Berry books are just like so short, such like compact, perfect, easy thrillers you can read in a day if you're looking for something to like read by the pool. A Lucinda Berry book would definitely be good for that. Maybe not this one <laughs> because this one, 
was deep. And I was not expecting it to be this good, but it was in fact that good. I know in my last update, I was saying like, I have been wondering and not searching, but like I've been interested in this type of representation for mental health. And like I say all the time, I don't know if a thriller or a horror book is the best place for any kind of mental health representation, whether it be bad or good. Um, I like a mental health rep in books when there's commentary, right? It's not just like somebody putting in a mental illness into a book because they can. Whether it's accurate or not, I don't know if a thriller is the best place to do that. Uh, but when a thriller has something to say, that is when I can really support the mental health rep. I love the commentary in this book. I thought it was genius. I thought it was so complex, so nuanced. It really shows the other side of paraphilias because paraphilias can be extremely demonized and stigmatized. And I think it's really easy to talk about depression, anxiety, even trauma at this point in our popular culture. We can talk about that kind of stuff, but Things like pedophilic disorders still have a huge stigma around them. So it's really great to see this kind of commentary in a popular book. I really hope more people read this and can gain some empathy for the less glamorous mental health diagnoses. Um, as for the actual plot of the story, I wouldn't necessarily call this a thriller. I think it's more of a complex family drama. It was not drama. It wasn't salacious. It wasn't like that. It was just like, this was a heartbreaking story of a family and the complex issues that they had to face. Were there things that could be seen as twists? Maybe, but the big final twist I feel like was quite obvious. Uh, from reading reviews, I don't think it was like universally obvious. I think maybe just because I'm a mental health professional, I kind of expected that, you know, going into the book, I expected the final twist. And so when it was revealed, I was actually really satisfied and I didn't care that I had already, you know, predicted that that's what was going on uh, because it was a very satisfying, like, okay, the who, the what, the where, the why, it's all coming together and it was just a very satisfying book. I think this could be a little bit triggering or, you know, dysregulating to you if you have been abused or you are the survivor of um, the victimization of a pedophile. I would not recommend this book to you, but if you think you can handle reading about something like that, I really highly recommend Saving Noah. I thought it was incredible to be frank and I think it goes without saying that I'm gonna give this book five stars and Lucinda Berry we have learned over the course of this vlog is a new favorite author for me I mean we had two five star books a four star and a two star that really wasn't a two star until like the last two chapters so I think this is a very successful video if you ever commented on my videos asking me to read Lucinda Berry Thank you. You were right. I owe it all to you. So thank you so much for watching this vlog, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And like this video if you liked it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.